In this lesson, we will add our own terrain and imagery into a scenario. We are able to create custom globes with our own data or create globes from KML and ArcGIS data. To add analytical terrain to the scenario, we will right-click on the scenario object and open up its properties. Underneath the Terrain tab and Custom Analysis Terrain, we will add our own terrain. We will navigate to our Program Files, AGI, STK11, Code Samples, Shared Resources, Scenarios, slash Events, and within this folder, we will change the file type to .dem and load in a hoquium-e.dem file. Now that we have this under our list for custom analysis terrain sources and it is selected, we now have this terrain tile within our scenario analytically. To add it visually, we need to convert it to a .pdt file. So first we'll go hit apply and OK. Now we need to go to our utilities, imagery and terrain converter, and convert that .dem file to a .pdt file. So underneath imagery and terrain and terrain region, we will select our terrain source to be the same file path as our hoquium-e.dem file. And with that loaded in, we can choose the directory of where our .pdt file will be saved. So for example, I can go in and save this underneath my scenario folder. And then we can choose a file name for it. So hoquium is the region around Mount St. Helens. So I will name this Mount St. Helens so that I know where it is. And once I hit convert, it'll add its own extension and I can see that it's converting down here. With this complete, I can close out. And now I can add that terrain and imagery tile into my scenario using the Globe Manager. If your Globe Manager is not open, you can add it by going to your 3D graphics window and opening and selecting the Globe Manager. And within the Globe Manager, we will add terrain and imagery. Now from the file path, we can choose the file path of where we saved our scenario. So here is that tile piece that I just saved and I can select open. Now it's asking me if I want to use this terrain for analysis, seeing as though I brought it in analytically into my scenario through the scenario properties. I can choose either yes or no to keep, to make sure that I am using it analytically. I just always hit yes. To check to make sure that I loaded this in correctly, I'm going to right click on that .pdt file that I loaded in and go to zoom to. So I can see it rendering through into my scenario and I can see the outlines of the terrain tile that I just loaded in. Uh, to also check to make sure that it's in my scenario, I can right click on my object and toggle the extents. So now I can see an outline of that terrain tile that I just loaded in. So now it's loaded in both visually and analytically. So now I can untoggle it as well. Now I'd like to add a place object to my scenario and I'm going to add Mount St. Helens. And I can see now it's searched and found it for me and I can bring that in. So now I have my place object as well that I can also zoom to. And to make sure the name doesn't get uh, cluttered within the mountain tile, something I like to do is also within the scenarios um, 3D graphics properties, I'm just going to enable label declutter. So now this way I can see where my place object is, my Mount St. Helens, on the side of the mountain.
I want to make sure that my place object takes into account the terrain that I just loaded in. So I'm going to open my place objects properties and underneath as I'll mask, I want to use the terrain data as the mask and then use that mask for access constraints. Then I'm going to go underneath 2D graphics as I'll mask and show the Azel mask at a range of 10 kilometers. And click OK. So now I can see the Azel mask of, of the place object. And I can see how it incorporates the terrain in. So now if I was to compute access, I would know that access is computed when something is above this Azel mask that has been defined. So let's bring in an object to actually compute the axis to, and we will bring in a ground vehicle. So opening up the scenario, series insert SDK objects, I'm going to select ground vehicle, and I'll open it using the defined properties method. So before I create my route, I want to set my interpolation method to incorporate the terrain height. My granularity is set to 0.01 kilometers. And I want to make sure my reference is set to terrain. Now I can hit apply. So I can insert points in using the insert point button and manually type in a position point here. So I'll do that for the first point, 46.23. And then I'll also define the longitude. And hit apply. So now I have a single point inserted in. And I could do this by manually inserting additional points and creating the route here. Or I can use my 3D object edit in my 3D graphics window and create the route in the 3D graphics window as well. So that's what I'll do. I'm going to change my the object I'm moving to my ground vehicle. And I'm going to enable the edit object start accept. And I'm just going to uh, hit shift and left click with my mouse. And just click out a route on my mountain. Now I like to do this from a viewpoint of looking, looking down at it just so that I have the proper placement set. And now I can see that that's the point I inserted before. Just to remove it, I'm just gonna hit Shift once and select it once to remove that point. Now I'm gonna hit the Start Accept to accept my changes. And now I have a new vehicle route just along the edge of my mountain. If I wanna see how the terrain affects my access, I can compute access between my ground vehicle and my place object. So I'm going to right click and go to ground vehicles, access button, select my Mount St. Helens and hit compute. Now I can also pull up a, a access report and see all the times that I have access. So it doesn't seem like I have continuous access anywhere, but I have brief moments of access for my report. And so if I was to decrease the step size and zoom in a little closer, I could play my scenario and see when the access lines appear to tell me that I do have access at that point. Alternatively, I could also open up my timeline view and add time components. And for my access object, I could bring in the access intervals. And so it looks like my vehicle's route is very short, so something I can do is just fine tune it. So I'm just gonna grab that little gray square and drag this all the way to the side. So now I'm looking at my access intervals. If I want to make sure I'm looking at my vehicle's route, I'll also add that component to my timeline view. 
So I'm going to add the availability intervals. So I can see this is the end of my Beagle's route. So let me just zoom in a little bit more. And so now I can see moments of all the access between my ground vehicle and my place object.